everybody, uh, Best Doctor here. Uh, you remember from my last uh, talk about uh, the San Air Pit Police? Uh, you know, they touched on the fact that the guy was blasting through our pit area with his Cadillac trying to catch guys who were driving too fast on their pit bikes. Now, not every racer had a pit bike. Some guys just had bicycles and some people like me just preferred to use the uh, shoe leather express to get around the pits. Uh, but there was a fair number of guys who had them. Most of the times these guys had uh, little Honda Z50s, uh, some uh, Briggs and Stratton type little mini bike that probably has been made for the last 50 years. You know, with like a five horsepower lawnmower engine on it. Uh, some of the guys had little uh, dirt bikes, like 50 and 80 cc dirt bikes that were actually intended for kids, but you know, you could pick them up cheap on uh, Kijiji or something like that, and you could use them to rip around the pits to, uh, you know, to uh, save yourself some time. Now, the main reason a lot of guys use these uh, little uh, pit bikes was that in some cases the tracks were fairly large and you might have your pit area in one part of the track and the uh, office where they would post who would, uh, you know, what time you're supposed to be starting to race in or your grid positions or just some general information might be on the bulletin board on the far side of the track. And uh, you have to remember, okay, this is this is before Al Gore invented the internet, so if, if everything was on paper or you had to physically go talk to somebody to find out what was going on. So, you know, there was a lot of times where I'd see somebody heading off towards the office and I'd, I'd yell at them and just say, hey, let me know when the 250 practice session is this afternoon. And he'd come back and he'd tell me that it's almost like being like you're had guys who were sort of doing like the postman service. So they were running around. And, you know, sometimes the mechanics were using them because they needed to get uh, some tires. So they'd hop into the little pit bike and they'd whip off to the, uh, the tire, tire uh, supplier, either Michelin or Dunlop uh, trailers back in those days, and go pick up some tires and bring them back. Or if they were fully equipped that weekend, we'd get them, they'd mount them for us. So you'd, you'd see a, a guy driving a pit bike with a, t a, a tire and a rim under each arm, which was, you know, just kind of weird, but the sort of stuff that happens. And uh, it was just sort of a cheap, cheap form of uh, transportation that everyone tended to use. Now, the, the interesting thing about pit bikes, and not a lot of people really knew this, was that, and uh, this actually used to take place uh, when I first started racing and then it, then it got severely squashed, was racers being racers, someone came up with the right idea and we started racing pit bikes. Now, this was not a official sanctioned event. What this was, was a, uh, when racing was done for the day, you know, everyone was packing up and the guys who were uh, still at the, uh, the track spending the night, be it either Friday night or Saturday night, were kind of bored. And what happened is someone had suggested, why don't we race our pit bikes? Now you have to remember is that when we packed up and, and shut down for the night, a lot of the officials do as well. And of course on a Saturday night, you know, the, all the officials have been running the race, race weekend all weekend. They've either gone back to their hotel or home, or they're in a, 
motor home or whatever in their own side of the track and, and they're pretty well done they've had they've done their job they are finished for the day and uh, what happened was we had everyone put in 25 cents showed up with their uh, their pit bike and they had a race sometimes they raced on part of the racetrack but a lot of times they were racing in an area of the pits you know like put up a couple cones and say okay we're going around this garbage can and and you know we're going to go around that trailer or sort of agree a track and somebody is the, the starter and away they go well Racers being racers, you know, we can't leave good enough alone. So the next time someone who got trounced in his little 50cc, you know, lawnmower motor powered uh, scooter decided that it wasn't fast enough, so he, uh, boosted it up, put a bigger engine in it, more performance, run him on pure alcohol, and he shows up and then proceeds to beat the guy the next race who he beat, who uh, beat the guy who, he, who beat him. And then so begins the the war of the pit bikes and it didn't take long it was like maybe five or six races before it started getting stupid you know guys putting 250cc motocross engines like I'll, I'll admit they were like motocross engines from the, from the, from the late 1970s but you know everyone knows cubic inches wins or in this case cubic centimeters so we had guys that were just being absolutely insane and they also weren't wearing just for the record proper racing attire a lot of times it consisted of flip-flops and shorts and sometimes a helmet and surprisingly we never had anybody killed but we had a few guys who got hurt a lot of skin was lost a few broken fingers and toes and uh, eventually because people can't keep their mouth shut. The people who were in charge found out about it and uh, I remember the riders meeting where we literally, everyone got called to the uh, riders meeting and got read the riot act. And this was, this was actually a pretty serious uh, discussion here. It was uh, a lot of come on guys behave sort of thing it was like if I catch any of you and then proceed like I don't have enough bleeps to quote this word for word but basically the 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 word was if we catch you guys racing your bike bikes on any track after hours ever again not only will you be kicked out you will be banned for life and uh A lot of people, you know, they saw it coming, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a surprise. Uh, it didn't affect me one way or the other. A few of my friends were a little bit upset because they uh, lost out on entertainment, but it was kind of ridiculous when you think about it. The guys who were, you know, racing super bikes and. Grand Prix machines were risking their lives for which essentially was bragging weights and a five dollar prize. I remember that was the the highest purse they ever had acquired on the 25 cent entry. And uh, you know it was just uh, one of those interesting things that happens in, in the racetrack. 